Hello everyone and welcome. Today in the tutorial of today I'm going to show you how to import a terrain from a DTM or digital terrain model or a digital elevation model using Docofoser. So Docofoser is a grasshopper plugin that you can find it in Food for Rhino. Um, this is the website so you can get this information um, uh, also from GitHub. Uh, you can download the Docofoser uh, using a login and then you install it uh, just by copying the, uh, the HPI um, extension in the uh, as usual in the you go to files and the special holders and components folders and so you just go to the libraries and then you just put Docofoser there uh, with the GHPI uh, extension. So what we're going to do now is just to first learn how to import a digital terrain model. So we go to QGIS or any GIS uh, software you may have. Uh, we already got some information, some DTMs that were collected uh, from LiDAR and generated um, from the LiDAR we generated in Cloud Compare these DEMs and DTMs. So it can be an ASCII or TIFF, in this case an ASCII. AASC file and then so what we can do is I'm going to teach you how to work with both formats the ASC format and also docofoser import and XYZ format so in order just to get the XYZ format we need to transform or convert this digital terrain model so how we do this uh, we just go to the Processing toolbox, so you just go processing and toolbox or control LT, LT, and then we just right click here and we just put um, a GDAL to XYZ. So we open this algorithm and automatically will pop up here the ASC file. We only have one band, uh, we want the output as a comma separated value. And then we just choose the location for this value and we put save to file and we choose the name. So I already have a location for my file. So let me just go there um, to that particular place, my data, DTMs. Um, so and then instead of choosing CSV file, we just put all files and then you just put DTM underscore one in this my case and we just choose dot x y z so we need this extension okay so you don't be careful you don't need to and have to save it as a csv you have to save it as a all files and x y z okay we just put save i want to replace it because i already have it so the algorithm will run and so we'll run relatively quickly hopefully and when this is done, um, it should be ready to work with. In order just to have it ready, we just put run. That's it. Um, the algorithm is now processing. And the algorithm finished. Okay. We just close that. And so we just go and check the algorithm. So here we have the XYZ. So we just right click and we just open it with a notepad. So this is the type of format you will get. It's a very simple format. Now I want to show you something before going to the next step. Um, let's open an ASCII format. So you may you may get other um, data sets from LiDAR or terrestrial laser scanner. So you need to save it as an ASCII format. So this is uh, very interesting. Um, let me open this with a notepad again. So what you see here is an information. The ASCII is, a, is slightly different. You will have the number of columns, the number of rows, the location of the geolocation, and then you have here the cell size. But some information that is missing here is the no data value. So what happens is if you import this into Grasshopper or Docofoser, you may have problems. So what you have to is here one um one simple uh, uh, line and then you put the no data zero for example okay and then you save it so when you save it 
you should have um, ATM that looks or an ASCII form, uh, ASCII file that looks more like this. So you see no data value, or oh, sorry, is no data value. This is what you have to put. Uh, and then you put zero. In some cases, your data value will be uh, an awkward number like minus 999. So you just define what is your no data value. Okay, and that will depend on the data provider and the type of data you have. So once you have done this, we just need to go to Rhino. Okay, so there are two ways to import the DTM format. So one it is using the ASC, ASCII format, so it's ASC, and the second option is using XYZ. Okay, it's very similar in both cases. Once you have this, I want to quickly explain the different parameters you have here. So the first one is just the file path. So you will need to add a file path, okay, and connect it there. We will define it soon. And then you have an end. The end is the number of rows and columns to skip. So basically it's the resolution of your of your um, importation. So by default, um, it indicates the number of um, rows and columns as a pixel value. So in this case, if you go here, our pixel value is one meter. So if you put here in Rhino one, it will import that resolution. If your resolution in the QGIS is 10 meters, if you put one, that means that each row or each pixel is one here. It means it will be 10 meters because this is your original resolution. Okay. so. It's basically the number of rows that will skip in order to interpolate or generate the 3D. So we just leave it right now as a default because it will depend on your on your uh, DM or DTM. After that, we just copy and drag it here. Same. And um, these are the how you translate the X origin and the Y origin. We don't need to do that right now. So we just need to work with this. After that, so what we do is we select one file. Here we need to use the ASCII file. So ESC is this, and we put OK. It will take a little bit to add it. OK. Now, in this case, we're going to use the same, and we use the XYZ. The XYZ is here. And it also takes a couple of seconds. So depending how 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 is the resolution, it will take longer, or it will be uh, slightly faster. So now it's done. Now what we're gonna do in the next step is we need to use from grid grid shift. So what it's gonna do is just generate the docofosor list. Okay, and then we do the same with the X Y Z. And we just connect there. And after that, we just need to generate the grid. So we just go to geometry and we generate the mesh. So you will see here the mesh, correct? And then we just drag and drop. And we add here the mesh. So what I want to do now is you will see the differences. Okay, um, I will preview this. So I will preview this. I will take out the preview of all of this. Okay. So if you see here in the QGIS, the north, the true north is facing the low line areas and the steep areas are towards the south southeast okay um now if we go here to rhino we go to the top view the y represents north and the x represents the east correct so if we turn on this preview so you you will see that the DTM was imported with the correct angle, okay, from the ASC. Now, if you go to, we 
turn off this preview and then we go to the XYZ and we turn it on. So you will see that it has been rotated. Okay, this is rotating 90 degrees. So you need to take this into consideration when doing the importation and the analysis. Okay, so this is 90 degrees rotated compared to the original one. So in fact, we will need to, if you want the true one, you will need to rotate this 90 degrees. So you can use that and um, you can do it in Grasshopper. Um, you may need to rotate the whole thing in order to be aligned with the correct orientation. So this is up to you. So at this point, we are not going to work with this. So because we need to add this rotation, well, we can work with the ASC easily. So we just leave this here for future reference. But sometimes you don't have the ASCII file. You have the XYZ. So you have to say it. You, you, you have to use this command. And you just need to be sure what is the correct orientation. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to preview geometry. I'll create a custom preview and then we're going to put a material so we use a color swatch okay and so we just put the geometry uh, we go back to perspective so this is what you get um, is slightly this color might be useful um, you can also change here to shade it if you want to add some shades um, This is fine enough. Okay, so this is what we have. It's a bit shiny, but anyway. So now we have our terrain there properly imported. Okay, with the heights, the correct heights, and everything. So once we have done this, uh, you see the level of resolution. If you want to get this and bake it, so you just need to right click and bake. And send it to the default. Um, default is here. So you will see it's black because of the level of the resolution. It's one meter mesh and it's regular mesh. Okay, so this is what happens when you have a high resolution TM. Now you can change here the size of this, um, the number of rows that we will skip. So we can put two and connect there. It will process. Okay, so now that we bake again, so you will see that it's slightly bigger. As we increase this number, maybe it's good to move it this somewhere here, and then we're I'm going to increase increase this slightly higher, perhaps number five, and bake once again to compare the differences. So you will see the differences of degree. Okay. This much bigger, it's much smaller. So you start losing the resolution becoming coarser here. So you start losing resolution. But the process is much faster if you want to do some analysis or terrain manipulation. So what you could do is you just can, you just can modify this sort of resolution. This is five times the original grid. Okay. It doesn't tell you the exact number of the resolution. Okay, this is one way of doing. The other way is get rid of this and come here and use something called grid filter. So what the grid filter is going to do is a similar process. So you can assign the number three to four. And come here. And basically, we're going to replace this. By mistake, we should replace it here. And this should go to geometry. So now that it is how it works. OK, so what we have now, it's a much coarser grid. We bake it again. You will see the size of the, of the grid. OK, so this is another way to change the resolution. So we can change this name to resolution. Okay, so basically this is, we can group all of this, except for this part. Um, so we have 
here uh, importing ttm okay space up using asc okay this is the basic initial steps to get this DTM. Now, another thing that we can do with the grid is do a smooth, smoothing the grid. So what happened here is like, again, after filtering, we just go to smooth it. Okay, so it's going to make it much softer. And we can add the radius or the kernel to reduce it. It can be, a, it should be an integer number. So we can use by default, they are using number five. Okay, well, we can use, for example, number number six to see what's going on, what happened. And again, we just have to wait a couple of seconds. Connect this to this. So you will see it's considerably smooth. It's much, much smoother. And the H are also softer. So this is another, this is another uh, component that you can use. And so I, I will want to get back to the original one, okay, because this is perhaps the best way to work. Um, we have another one which is creating a region. That means that we're going to crop that region. And this is very useful when you want to concentrate to do the operations or manipulations of your terrain in a specific place. Um, let me put, let me organize this thing in a better way. So let me come here. Um, so in the region, we're just going to define a region. So we go to the top. And let's imagine we want to only focus on this particular rectangular area. So we create a polyline. OK, the polyline should be there underneath. It doesn't matter. Now, once, once we create that, we need uh, to define a curve. We connect the curve, then we define the curve here. Okay, so now let me copy this part and also copy this part. So we just avoid previewing this. So we are just working on this. A specific part and we can internalize the information we can internalize the data so we just get rid of this okay so we have this preview or we have the complete preview sorry of the whole area you can see And with this region, we can do the manipulations or the softening, whatever we want to do. Um, here, we can increase the resolution, so it's becoming coarser. You will see how it starts changing. Or we can decrease and make it much sharper and highly precise. Well, it's taking a little bit. As we increase the resolution, eh, the processes will take a bit longer because they are, there is much more to calculate. So just wait a little bit. So you can see now much more detail in the terrain. So that's basically our first tutorial. Um, thank you very much. And I will, in the next following tutorials, I will teach you how to create different uh, manipulations and how to generate noises and, and analyze some of the data. Thank you.